We have new information that suggests that not only is a 16 inch MacBook Pro coming, but it's coming this year, specifically in the next like two to three months. What? So I realized I haven't actually made a video where I talk about the now pretty much confirmed upcoming 16 inch MacBook Pro. So let's do that today. But a lot of you have probably already heard a lot of this stuff because these rumors have been around since February. So let's talk about the new stuff and give a brief overview. So before I get started, this video is mainly gonna be a talking head video. So feel free to put this in the background while you do other things. So basically what we're talking about here is a first step towards a new generation of MacBook Pro, a redesigned design, that's kind of a redundant saying, with a larger display and thinner bezels. Now a lot of people think that this is gonna be a replacement for the 15 inch MacBook Pro because they're just gonna enlarge the display and keep the bezels the same. However, if you actually look at this chassis, you can't fit a 16 inch display while keeping the same footprint. So it's gonna have to be larger than the existing 15 inch MacBook Pro. So it's at this point that these rumors start to get a little bit confusing because all we really know is increasing number of details about the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And we'll get into what just got announced very recently in just a minute. But what I've been trying to sort of grapple with for the last couple of months ever since these rumors started is how is this going to affect the complete product line and especially since we got 2019 macbook pro updates minor updates back in may how are those going to be affected because i want to point out that it is unbelievably rare to see apple refresh an existing design and then redesign a macbook in the same year that has only ever happened one time in early 2008, the original non-unibody MacBook Pro was refreshed with mild, mild updates. And then later in 2008, the unibody MacBook Pro was introduced that superseded it. That was the only time that we've had a refresh and a redesign in the same year. So it seems unlikely that that's gonna happen. So my proposal is this. I think this 16 inch MacBook Pro is gonna be additional. It's going to be on top of the existing 13 and 15 inch lineups because let's be real if apple was replacing the 15 inch macbook pro with a 16 inch macbook pro you'd expect that this new design would do the same thing for a 13 inch macbook pro maybe make it a 14 inch something like that but we haven't heard any rumors suggesting that so what i think is likely to happen is we're going to have this new design debut with a flagship 16 inch macbook pro and then next year, probably around WWDC, have that new design roll out across the 15 and 13 inch models with their existing pricing structure. Make no mistake, this 16 inch MacBook Pro that's rumored is going to be more expensive than even the top of the line 15 inch. It's gonna start probably at $3,000, maybe more than that. So let's talk about the new information that was just recently revealed the resolution of the display, which allows us to do some calculations and figure out a little bit more about this new MacBook Pro. So analyst Jeff Lynn believes that the 16 inch MacBook Pro is going to have a resolution of 3072 by 1920. So let's use this information to pinpoint a more exact resolution for this new display, because up until this point, everyone's kind of been, oh, well, it'll be somewhere between 16 and 17 inches. However, Apple has a very specific pixel density when it comes to retina displays, especially on their laptops. They are shooting for 220 pixels per inch. So let's go over to this DPI calculator. And if we put in 3072 by 1920, at 16.4 inches, we get exactly 220 pixels per inch with the 16 by 10 aspect ratio that Apple absolutely loves. So based on this, I would say that this display is gonna be about 16.4 inches, which is exactly an inch larger diagonally than the existing 15 inch MacBook Pro. So it's not gonna be as big a jump as the 13 to the 15, which is actually 13.3 to 15.4. So it's gonna be a little bit less of a size increase, but when we're talking about a 16 inch display on a laptop, 
it's definitely going to be big. So this report from Mac Rumors doesn't really detail the specifications of the device, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of speculation about that now. Now one of the things that had been sort of giving me pause in terms of a 2019 update is talking about what processors Apple would put in this device. So Apple has for a very long time been working on this switch to their own custom processors. Now that's not going to be ready for a 16 inch high end MacBook Pro. We can assume that this thing is going to be higher end than the 15 inch and I don't think they're ready for that in September of this year. That's not going to happen. So we're looking at Intel chips for probably this year, next year, maybe even 2021 before we start getting Apple custom chips in the MacBook Pro. So the thing that's kind of been confusing me is we just got these new 10 nanometer processors from Intel. However, the ones that are slated to be released for the holiday season this year are going to be much lower TDP U series processors. You wouldn't find those in a 15 inch MacBook Pro, let alone an even higher end 16 inch MacBook Pro. So what processors are gonna go in these things? Are these things gonna be announced with ninth generation processors literally months before those are gonna be old news? Maybe Apple's going to announce this thing in September, but wait until they can get 10 nanometer processors in it before they actually release it. Personally, I can't see Apple releasing a new design that's still running ninth generation processors. Because keep in mind, ninth generation is still Skylake architecture, which has been around since 2015. It's not the most efficient. And these, especially the more recent ones, where they're starting to add cores and stuff, they run a lot hotter. Apple ran into those issues with the Core i9 MacBook Pro in 2018. And thermals are still not where anyone would really like them to be on the current MacBook, or really the whole Mac line, let's be honest. So I think Apple is really, really hoping that these new chips with a smaller nanometer process are going to be more efficient and produce less heat. And they're probably counting on that for this new design. So I personally can't see them releasing a computer in September, October, 2019 running ninth gen Intel. That just seems unlikely. So what I'm hoping is they've got some sort of a backdoor deal worked out with Intel where these new processors will come out in the MacBook Pro ahead of them coming out across the board probably later at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. That's my personal hope. I really would be bummed if we get a new design, awesome new display technology, and it's still running 9th gen processors. That would be kind of a bummer. Now as far as the graphics, this doesn't get a whole lot of attention, but the graphics in the MacBook Pro right now are really outdated. So by default, the Radeon Pro 555X and 560X that you'll find on the 15 inch non-Vega MacBook Pros, those are Polaris GPUs. In terms of technology, those things are absolutely ancient. So I fully expect that we'll see some sort of RDNA new GPUs with this new seven nanometer process from AMD. I fully expect that we will see new processors with that architecture in this MacBook Pro. So let's talk a little bit about the timing for the rest of the range because what this is starting to look like to me, and granted we don't know for sure until anything's actually announced, that's how all of tech really works. But from what I can see, the way this is going to play out is a new design with this 16 inch flagship MacBook Pro. Then we'll have a couple of months with that out before that starts to make its way down to the 15 and 13 inch MacBook Pros. So I expect that we'll see a lot of the improvements that we see with this new 16 inch MacBook Pro make their way to the 15 inch, but keeping that price bracket intact. The whole 2399, 2799 pricing for the 15 inch MacBook Pro is unlikely to change. They've been using that give or take about $100 for the last seven years. That pricing structure has remained intact. And I imagine the 13 inch will retain its current pricing structure as well. But of course, they'll all get updated with 10 nanometer processors. Certainly if they're being updated in 2020, I fully expect that um, they'll get a new design, probably a new keyboard, hopefully a new keyboard, and maybe even some of the new display technology from the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Which by the way, I realized I didn't actually mention, 
Um, so it's supposedly going to be an LCD display going in this thing. We heard a couple of murmurs about OLED displays for MacBooks. That's probably gonna be a few years out at this point. Same with micro LED, probably one to two years out. Um, that might be a refresh with the next design. They'll improve the display technology or they'll hold off until the next, next design, which could be 2023 or 2024 at this point. But LCD is supposedly what we're gonna see in this new 16 inch MacBook Pro. But I have a feeling and I'm not sure, there's absolutely nothing to back this up, but I have a feeling that it's going to be something like a MacBook Pro XDR. We could see some of the technology that we saw in the Pro Display XDR make their way, scale down a little bit. It's gotta fit in a laptop. It's gotta be cooled without fans and giant pores on the back of the monitor. But something like that, in terms of display technology, an XDR MacBook Pro, that definitely seems possible to me. Definitely seems possible. So the thing that we don't know a whole lot about is the keyboard, because there needs to be a new keyboard. Like, holy crap, we need a new keyboard. Now, since these rumors started churning in February, it's always been kind of like, okay, well, they're gonna update the design, the display, thin out the bezels, they're gonna update a new keyboard. That's just something that's probably going to happen at this point, given the fact that they released a 2019 MacBook Pro and they were like, you know what, it's part of the program. We know that it sucks, guys. Literally one day after they announced it, they're like, you guys, the keyboards are probably gonna still break. So yes, I fully expect a new keyboard, but I don't know what it's gonna be. Because here's the thing, when it comes to the MacBook Pro, or really Apple in general, we always have some idea of a couple of options that they might take. Whether they take it or not, you have a couple of things where you're like, this seems like a logical next step. I don't know where they go after Butterfly, because obviously, Apple has never been the type of company to just go, oops, I guess that was a bad idea, let's go back to what we had before. They never do that. They either commit to something and work out the issues and fix what they've already got, or they m ditch it and they move on without, of course, saying that they're ditching it, but they're like, oh, we're gonna move on to the next innovation further down the road, which in their case is thinner and lighter. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, I think as far as typing experience and sort of key travel, keyboard thinness, I don't wanna go any further than that. This is a very thin device. This is my 15 inch MacBook Pro. This keyboard is very thin, everyone knows that, but it still feels pretty tactile. The key travel is okay in my opinion. I enjoy typing on these keyboards. I get that a lot of people don't like it, but I think it's doable for most people. However, this is a very thin device. I don't see any need to make the MacBook Pro thinner. This new design, there's absolutely no need for that. This is a remarkably thin Pro laptop and I don't think there's really any need or want to make it any thinner than it currently is. And the same applies then for the keyboard. So if they're not gonna make it thinner, but they're definitely not gonna make it thicker, how are they gonna fix the problem? What is it going to look like? So one of the ideas that's been floating around for a couple of months is, and it hasn't gained a whole lot of traction, I've only seen a couple of articles about it um, based on patent filings, which are really the least reliable rumors. Whenever you see a rumor like, Apple filed a patent, take it with a grain of salt because Apple files a ton of patents. Tech companies file dozens of patents. But one of the ones that I saw was a keyboard without keycaps. Now this would definitely be interesting because that would solve the design flaw with the butterfly keyboard. Basically, dust goes under the keycap and gets stuck. You can't have that if you don't have a keycap. But we don't know what that would mean. Would it be something like the iPad Pro keyboard cover where it has like a sort of fabric mesh and then you've still got normal keys under there? Maybe. Although I can't see Apple really using fabric on a MacBook Pro. That doesn't seem likely to me. So some people were suggesting maybe having glass keycaps, maybe keycaps that don't actually move. So those later two, hmm. I'm not too keen on that. Glass keycaps, or well, not keycaps, but glass keyboard does not seem like a good idea. 
keycaps that don't move. Come on, son. That's just, that's not a good idea. Like, I get the whole, ooh, there's less key travel on the butterfly keyboard. None. No key travel. The keys don't even move. Although, now that I say that out loud, that does sound like something Apple would do, but please don't. Whatever it is, the stakes are very high. This, in my opinion, is a bigger deal than thermal issues, than value and pricing, than mediocre specs. If you don't have a reliable keyboard, nothing else really matters. And I don't mean to sound alarmist, I still use my 16 inch MacBook Pro even though the keyboard sucks. But in terms of quelling the cries of many, many people, fixing the keyboard should be a top priority. So I hope that they get it right. Okay, so final thoughts, 16 inch MacBook Pro, hopefully 10 nanometer Intel, seven nanometer RDNA new AMD GPUs, a 3072 by 1920 XDR question mark retina display, a new keyboard with improved keys, a new design with improved thermal architecture. That is a very good checklist. If they can pull all of those things off and do it well and not cost like $7,000, that is a very, very promising device. I'm very excited to see how this thing turns out, and I will buy one. I'm making that commitment right here, right now. I will buy the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Please, Apple, don't make it $6,000. I don't want to spend $6,000 on a laptop. So that'll do it for today's video. As usual, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani. Please consider joining my subreddit if you get the chance or you have any questions. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.